there's one thing that has been great about this filming adventure Uriah and I have been on, it's that we get to document our story with several deer we know behind the camera. One of those deer is a deer we called Short Ten. Short Ten is another deer we began watching as a three-year-old in 2013. In the summer of 2014, Uriah went and scouted one of our bean fields when Short Ten and Big Brow both appeared together. The problem with Short Ten was his home range and his quite elusive nature. However, he showed up a lot on our trail camera early season and was very uniquely identified by his unicorn brow. We went all season with merely one sighting of Short Ten. As late season closed in, Uriah took good buddy Josiah out to the southern food plot and searched for Short Ten. The following hours were some of the most exciting of the season and left us hopeful for the future. We are pretty excited here in northern Kentucky. Uh, we're getting pretty anxious too because we only have one weekend after today uh, to hunt. Today is January the 10th. We're going to head out to the southernmost part of the property where our biggest fridge and forage big and beastie food plot is at. And we went there last night and got completely blanked. It was just, that's just part of it though. But we're going to keep going back and uh, hopefully tonight maybe we won't make any mistakes. Maybe that's what caused last night to not work out. We don't know, but we're going to keep trying to go after our number one hit list buck short 10. I got my good friend with me today, Josiah. He's going to be behind the draw. And uh, Lord willing, we're going to get a, at least an encounter with him. That would be awesome. We haven't had an encounter on film with him at all this year. So we're going to head out there and we're just trust the Lord that uh, it be a really good night. spot. Uh, it's a place we call it the South Grown Up Field. Uh, we're right in the middle of our food plot in our hay bale blind. It's a uh, frigid forage food plot and uh, this is where we've patterned short tin. Um, Uriah uh, had a lot of confidence in this spot uh, just about 15 minutes ago but uh, now that we've gotten out here and we realize how calm it is uh, I think he's completely lost confidence for tonight's hunt, uh, for this spot, and he's really kind of bumming me out, so uh, I was trying to stay positive, and uh, we really got no other option. Uh, we talked about going to the Grove, but we just, we don't really have uh, many mature bucks out there that are coming out during shooting light, so um, we gotta stick with what we can do on a short ten, and so, uh, it's about 19 degrees. Uh, hopefully uh, the wind will pick up and it'll hide some of our noise. And you can literally hear a pin drop out here in this field.
Alright, so that was a really awesome hunt. Didn't end up exactly how we wanted it to, but we executed everything perfectly. We went on the right wind. That wind was coming out from exactly where Short 10 came from. We waited for a cold front. Just so happened when we got out there, the wind really died down. And I didn't like it because that entire field is sloped a little bit towards the west. Maybe, uh, you know, elevation drop of about 20 feet, 30 feet, something like that. But we feel that when it gets really calm out there, that wind can swirl just a little bit. And we felt like that it, that's exactly what happened. Like I said, we executed everything perfectly. And sometimes Mother Nature just doesn't cooperate. But I think that's what makes it a lot of fun is it's not easy. It's very difficult. you got to put your time in. Yeah, some people get lucky. But for the most part, you got to put your time in. You got to execute properly and know what you're doing to really accomplish something like that. Just Mother Nature didn't cooperate, and that happens sometimes. That's part of what makes hunting so challenging. So we'll keep going, and we'll keep finding these. This is Short Ten's left side. Uh, measures right around 60 inches, and uh, we believe his spread because how he really swoops out. I believe his spreads right around 24 inches. So. He might only be, you know, 144, but that's okay. He's still a mature deer, regardless of what his antler scores. Um, that's what we like to do is hunt mature deer. So, got a bunch of sheds behind me that I found from this year. Always enjoy shed hunting in the spring. And he looked pretty healthy, pretty healthy uh, base from best we could tell. So hopefully he'll be back this coming season. Hopefully he's out there right now sleeping in the woods. But we'll definitely be back hunting this guy. And uh, Lord willing, we'll have a part two to this episode. But thanks for watching. May God richly bless each and every one of you. And thanks for watching The Whitetail Factor. I think my face should be blurred out. <laughs> <laughs>